Planning, Zoning, and Historical Committee meeting for Tuesday, July 7th, 2020. Um, and it is 4 p.m. And I detect a quorum, but I'm going to go ahead and do a quick roll call. So if you will unmute yourself as I'm getting to you, it's alphabetical. Council Lady Benedict. <laughs> Councilman Bradford. Present. I'm sorry, Benedict, was that you? No, that was Bradford. Okay. 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 Councilman Cash. Here. I'm, I'm present. Great. Council Lady Eddins. Great. Right. Council Lady Gamble. I see. Present. Councilman Hager. I think I saw you. Present. Great. Councilman Hall. Councilman, Councilman Hall Parker. is here in the chamber trying to log in. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Parker. Um, Councilman O'Connell. I think he's still in another committee. Mm -hmm. Councilman Parker, got you. Uh, I'm present. Present. Oh, great. Fabulous. Thank you. Councilman Rutherford. Aye. I see his name. We'll go with that one. Council Lady Styles. Okay. Um, Council Lady Toombs, I think I saw you on here. Fabulous. Council Lady Van Reese. Here. Uh, Council Lady Welch, I think I saw her. Here. Great. And Councilman Withers. Present, although I have to depart at uh, 4.15 for the personnel committee. Okay. All right, well, let me go ahead and make the motion pursuant to Governor Lee's executive order number 16 regarding electronic meetings as extended by executive orders 34 and 51. I make a motion that this committee meeting agenda constitutes essential business of the Metropolitan Council and that the meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, um, I guess Great, we have a, oh good, Council Lady Styles seconds. Um, does any, if anyone objects to this motion, please raise your hand in WebEx or speak now. Wonderful, that motion passes. So uh, I do wanna make a quick uh, planning chair announcement. When we had our special meeting last week, I did miss our special meeting about home occupation. I did misspeak. I thought that bill was coming back to our committee and that was incorrect. As you remember, we've had 38 bills traveling through here. And so I just have not been able to uh, keep them all on track. So I apologize for misspeaking last week about the home occupation bill. We're gonna run through, um, I'll announce the consent calendar real quick. Um, if you have anything you want to bump from it, please let me know at the end. So uh, item number two on your agenda, RS 2023-85, O'Connell Murphy Henderson authorizes Nashville Underground LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment, a sign at 105 Broadway. This is on consent to defer. That should not be on consent. I'm sorry? Councilman, Thank you. sorry. It's on consent to defer one meeting. So item number two, RS 2020-427, Cash, Murphy, and Henderson amends ordinance number BL 2019-1712 to authorize the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes and easements, and to accept new sanitary sewer manholes and easements for five five properties located on Belmont Boulevard and Compton Avenue on consent to approve. Moving to page two on your agenda. Um, item number four, is Councilman Hall on the call yet? I'm not seeing him, so we will- Councilman Hall here, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Uh, there we go. Okay, so item number four, RS 2020-428, Hall Gamble and others, accepts a flood mitigation assistance grant from the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency to the Metro Department of Water and Sewage Services and authorizing the acquisition and demolition of two houses located in various floodways, floodplains in Davidson County. That is on consent to approve. 
Moving to bills on second reading, item number five, BL 2019-8 by Roberts and Henderson amends section 17.20.120 of Title 17 of the Metro Code pertaining to the provisions of sidewalks. I have a letter to defer this to December 1st and that is on consent. Moving to item number eight on your agenda, page three, BL 2020-304 by Withers, Murphy, and others, renames a portion of Sumner Place between South 4th Street and South 5th Street to Jerry Newsom Way. That is on consent to be approved. Item number 10, BL 2020-325, Withers, Mendez, and others, approves a lease agreement between the Metropolitan Government and the Episcopal School of Nashville. That is on consent to approve. Item number 11, BL 2020-326 by Syracuse, Murphy, and others renames a portion of old elm hill pike between mcgavick pike and ermat drive to sims branch way that is on consent to approve and we have the sponsor in the room so we're good on that moving on to page four item 12 bl 2020-321 i'm sorry 327 o'connell murphy and henderson authorizes 900 church street llc to install construct and maintain underground and aerial encroachments in the right of way located at 900 church street that is on consent to approve and then item number 15 bl 2022-90 by council lady lee and then 65.1 acres of an, a specific plan for property located at 3839 murfreesboro pike approximately 530 feet north of old hickory boulevard zone sp and within the murfreesboro pike urban design overlay district to permit a mixed use development i have a letter to defer that to the first meeting in august and so that is also on our consent calendar and concludes our consent calendar is there anything that needs to be bumped from consent, please raise your hand. Okay, seeing none, um, that is our consent calendar. If you would like to- Hang on, Madam Chair, my hand isn't raising for some reason I don't understand. Um, the bill 2232, did you have that on the consent to approve? Two, three, two. No, I did not because it was disapproved by traffic and parking. Ah, uh, perfect. Okay, I just want to make sure that was not on consent because we're gonna. I'm gonna move to defer that indefinitely. Thank you. Great. I've got you. We'll do it in a second. Um, do, any other questions on our consent agenda? Councilmember Murphy, Madam Chair. Yes. This is Councilmember Withers. Um, you have the floor. Thank you. For item number nine, which is the renaming of Solar Place from to Jerry Newsom way, is there a, a reason why that was not on consent? It is on consent to be approved. Oh, it is, okay. So um, items nine and 10 are both on consent? Yes, they are. Okay, thank you so much. I sure. appreciate that. And I ran through those pretty fast. If uh -huh. you want to go through them one more time. So item number two, item number three, item number four, item number five, item number nine, Item number 10, item number 11, item number 12, item number 15. We're all on consent to approve or defer to a date um, mentioned. So any other questions on that consent calendar? Seeing none, hearing none, then I will, just a second. Um, hearing none, seeing none, then I will make that motion. Council Lady Styles. I second. Thank you. And so if you would like to vote against the consent calendar uh, or agenda, please raise your hand or speak now. Hearing none, seeing none, our consent agenda um, is moved out of here. So that takes us to item number six on bills on second reading this is page two of your agenda bl 2020-127 by councilman hall changes 53.22 acres from sp and 40 to muna zoning for properties located at 6404 eaton's creek road 3580 3612 3616 and 3622 old clarksville pike 
Eaton's Creek Road unnumbered and Old Clarksville Pike unnumbered, approximately 215 feet west of the Jolton Community Center Road. Councilman Hall? I am here and we are going to defer indefinitely. That is a proper motion. I will second it. Um, if you'd like to vote against the motion, please uh, raise your hand. And if you are unable, please speak now or send a carrier pigeon. <laughs> All right, seeing none, hearing none, your motion to defer indefinitely is approved. That takes us to item number seven on our agenda, BL 2020-224 as amended by Taylor, Suara, and others, amends chapter 11.22 of the Metro Code to require landlords to provide notice to tenants prior to the sale of the property. Um, Council, uh, well, Councilman Taylor, I'm sorry, you're not on our committee. I will make a motion to have it properly in front of us. Council Lady Stiles. I second the motion. Thank you. And Councilman Taylor, before I, I give you the floor, uh, Hannah, if you would uh, remind or refresh us, is the substitutes ordinance, is that something we need to take up or is it's been a while since this bill's been before us? Do we need to take that up or is that already on the bill? The substitute uh, needs to be adopted at some point. Uh, I was gonna say, I'll, I'll defer to the sponsor on whether they wanna take it up tonight. Okay, I knew there had, we had a, it was as amended already. I just wanted to make sure we had it uh, properly in the, in the right position. Correct, and actually the substitute cleans up the amended version a little bit. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that clarification, Hannah. Uh, Councilman Taylor, would you like the floor? Yes, thank you. I would thank you, Madam Chair. I would love to move the substitute, and then I'll ask for a deferral on this tonight. Um, <clears throat> gonna gonna continue to work on it um here over the next few months but uh wanted to get the substitute added uh, as hannah mentioned that substitute is more or less housekeeping from those amendments um uh just kind of clean up okay great i will move the substitute uh council lady styles second second thank you um, if you are would like to vote against the substitute, uh, please raise your hand or speak now. See none and hearing none, that substitute is approved. Hello. Councilman, what are you looking for when you're uh, wanting to defer? Yes, I'll ask uh, if a uh, committee member would be so kind to move a deferral to the first meeting in September. I'll be happy to make that motion. So I am deferring this to the first meeting in September. Else. I think that was a second already. Um, if you are against deferring this to the first meeting in September, please raise your hand or speak now. Hearing none, seeing none, Councilman, your bill is deferred. Moving Thank you. on to item number eight. BL 2020-232, abandoned uh, by Councilman O'Connell, abandons a portion of alley number 146 right away from Lafayette Street to Elm Street. Um, I will move the bill. I guess, Councilman O'Connell, will you make a, why don't you go ahead and make your motion that you want? Yeah, I'll, I'd like to move to defer this indefinitely, please. And I'd be happy um, brief explanation if I get a second. I will second that. So we are, um, that is a proper motion and properly seconded before us. And so if you would like to, do you want to explain further or are you set, Councilman? Yeah, basically this one is, I checked um, staff. I mean, so you can see the Traffic and Parking Commission disapproved it. Part of the reason for that, I think, was timing related. I think in the period before COVID, the convention center had some immediate term needs for a parcel they've acquired to their Southeast for parking and I think some equipment. And now um, those needs are no longer as urgent based on uh, current bookings to defer indefinitely in the event that something changes later this year uh, or next uh, to see 
if we might need to bring it back. Eventually, the, the original reason for the overall abandonment actually had to do with the planned use of the site for a WeGo public transit facility to be built in partnership with, with uh, NCC and, and Again, I don't expect that to be something that happens uh, any time in this fiscal year, so I am recommending indefinite deferral. Great. Thank you, Councilman. Um, if anybody would like to vote against the indefinite deferral, uh, please raise your hand or speak now. Seeing none and hearing none, Councilman, your bill is deferred indefinitely. That takes us to Thank you. page four of our agenda bills on third reading item number 13 substitute bill 2021-87 and um do we have councilman pulley in the room yet okay he asked me to let him know when his bill is up so i'm just going to roll that down one space to come back to it and so we are on item number 14, substitute BL 2020-264 by Councilman Swope. Do we have Councilman Swope? You do. Wonderful. Um, Councilman, this is substitute BL 2020-264, changes 3.47 acres from AR2A to SP zoning for property located at 5978 and 5984 Edmondson Pike, approximately 320 feet north of Mount Pitsco Road to permit eight single family lots and two duplex lots. I will make the motion, Council Lady Stiles. I second Thank the motion. Thank you. Councilman Swope, you have the floor. I would ask your approval. This is pretty straightforward. Okay, great. That uh, I will a motion to approve and Council Lady Stiles. Yes, thank you. If you'd like to vote against this um, motion to approve, please raise your hand or speak now. Hearing none and seeing, oh, my screen just changed. Okay, seeing none. Councilman, your bill is approved and moved out. Thank you so much. That takes us to the, uh, has Councilman Pulley joined us? Oh, we're, we can now see each other. Hello. Great. Councilman Pulley, it looks like you have joined us. So we will come, go back to item number 13, which is substitute bill BL 2020-187 as amended. Um, amends Title 5, 6, and 17 of the Metro Code zoning regulations pertaining to short-term rental properties. Um, I will make a motion to have the bill before us. And Council Lady Stiles. Second. Thank you. Um, Councilman Pulley, would you like to explain your bill? It was a good project, and so that's where that money is allocated. Councilman Pulley? Hi. Let me mute this other one. Can you oppose? Thank you very much. I know you're very what's going on. All right. Okay. You ready for me? I am ready for you. Please explain your bill. Okay, good. Um, so uh, 187 is uh, a bill that we put together. We've been looking at doing this for uh, quite a while now. And the purpose of the bill uh, mainly is to create a separate um, board for short-term rentals and get short-term rentals out of uh, the uh, BZA and create a board uh, for them to operate independently. Uh, so the board is constructed of seven members. Uh, at this point, the only uh, member on there that has a requirement is an attorney. So um, uh, you know, we moved it into Title VI. There was some concern from some people uh not very many but some uh, uh express some uh, uh concern about not being able to have future regulations go to public hearing uh i wasn't initially concerned about that because i thought all those uh 
regulations really have run their course. But as we know by the fact that we've got several bills outstanding as we speak, that's not the case. So the bill was amended to add uh, a public hearing into the situation. So anytime there's any regulatory information brought forward, uh, there will be a public hearing triggered by this bill. Um, so I uh, just wanted to make that point. Um, and so really, uh, I'm here to, to answer any questions. And Emily Lamb is also on the call. She is from, uh, she obviously the zoning administrator. So uh, she's familiar with the bill and its origins. So if anyone has, has any questions of her, she's there to answer them. So I'm ready to take questions. Okay. And also one other thing uh, I, I will note uh, that uh, there is no fiscal note attached to this because uh, um, basically, you know, they'll be moving the responsibilities from one board to the other and codes already has personnel uh, uh, ready and able to handle that responsibility. Okay, um, Councilman Brown, 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 Bradford, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. My only question is, on this bill, is there anything to, like, the makeup of the board? You said right now the only thing set in stone is there has to be an attorney. Are we, is there anything in there to ensure that representation is diverse as far as making sure that it's not all individuals from there now? We're making sure as many areas of the city and different types of areas are represented. I don't think there's anything in this bill that addresses uh, the board any differently than the rest of the boards in our city are addressed. Uh, you know, it's up to the mayor to appoint uh, members of the board, uh, and it's up to us to call on the mayor to, to do whatever it is. It's, uh, we want uh, to urge the mayor to do with respect to that issue. I know there's been some concern and there may be an amendment that uh, is going to be offered that addresses representation of the short-term rental um, um, uh, group and the neighborhood group. You know, I would also, uh, you know, I would also argue that it's important for us to let the mayor know that we want uh, that kind of representation on there. We do run into some issues if you start mandating, then uh, that leaves a challengeable situation as to, uh, Okay, well, uh, if you got a mandate for someone who's a neighborhood so a neighborhood person, how do you define that? Uh, so, you know, legislating that leaves leaves legal challenges open in a way that uh, uh, a strong urge from the council doesn't. If that makes any sense. Council, okay, thank you. Does that cover it? Yeah, that covers it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Council. Let's go to Councilman O'Connell, and then we'll go to Council Lady Allen, who has an amendment. Councilman O'Connell, you have the floor. Thank you. I guess I would direct this question to Lamb. Um, although, if the sponsor knows the answer, he can certainly uh, chime in. Um, from a standpoint, I know. It looks as though the legislation is, you know, has a impact in terms of, um, you know, overall changes to the Metro Code of Laws than just creating this board. Um, you know, we we as a council have done a lot of work uh, in Title VI and Title Seventeen, respectively, to try to get the regulatory environment right here. Is is the fundamental side effect of this bill to create this board? Um, and, you know, I guess I just want to make sure for reassuring members of the general public, are there any other side effects that we have not yet discussed or might not be obvious to someone trying to follow the legislation at home? Hi, this is Emily. Can y'all hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, so, Councilman O'Connell, we did not change any of the regulations with respect to short-term rentals eligibility and non-eligibility. We just moved it from Title 17 to Title 6. Um, part of the reason of that was to kind of get it with the other business regulations um, that are that are housed in Title VI um, and to create the Short-Term Rental Appeals Board. The idea behind that being if we can get a board that hears only short-term rentals, we will get an area of expertise among those board members that they don't necessarily have. Board of Zoning Appeals members 
you know, you've got some architects, you've got some lawyers, you've got a business owner, and they have certainly learned the short-term rental law over the years that they've heard the appeals, but they are, they are, they're really on the board to hear zoning cases, you know, setback variances or special exceptions, et cetera. Um, so the idea of creating this short terminal appeals board was to get an area of expertise among the board members, as well as to get the different perspectives of, you know, neighborhood advocates, um, industry advocates. It does not change any of the regulations except to create this board. Um, and again, the reason we had to move it to Title VI, not only to get it among the other business regulations, but because by state law, any appeal from the zoning code is required to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals. So therefore, we can't create a short terminal appeals board if it's coming from Title 17. I see. So we moved it to Title 6 so that we're, we're no longer bound by state to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals. We can create a separate board, still hear the appeals. Um, and as Councilman Pooley said, our code staff is already staffing Board of Zoning Appeals. We're prepping the cases. That same staff is still prep the cases. They would just prep them for this board instead of the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, so there's no additional personnel or staffing or cost associated with it. It's just getting it out of Title 17 so that we can have this separate appeals board. Um, and again, same appellate rights. You appeal the cases to the board, and then from there you can get a court. Thank you very much, Ms. Lamb. That answers my question uh, succinctly and effectively. I appreciate it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Emily. Let me make sure I heard you correct background noise. Um, it was when when looking up some other other issues, and I think you mentioned this in your answer. So if you could just elaborate a little bit further, I was under the impression that Board of Zoning Appeals only had, like, they were the only board with the authority by state law to do the zoning. So is what you're saying that because we're changing the law, we're circumventing that part of this law? But I'm going to, uh, there was a lot of feedback, so I'm going to, I think I heard your question, but let me know if I'm not um, answering you, if I, if you need me to elaborate, but that's Point of order, law. please yeah. mute if you're not talking. Yeah, I think, um, let's see here, Russ Pulley, yeah, you muted, um, let's see who else I've got unmuted. Okay, Emily, it should be just, okay, go for it. Okay, so by state law, appeals from the zoning code are required to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals, so this being housed in Title 17 was necessarily a zoning law. If we move it to Title 6, it is no, it no longer falls under the category of a zoning law, and so therefore we're not legally required to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals. We can still, there's still the appellate rights. You can still go to an appeals board who can make a decision one way or the other. It just is a different board that the state law currently would not allow us to do because that is, by being in Title 17, it necessarily has to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh oh, I can't hear you. Because I muted myself. I'm sorry. There you go. <laughs> um, so uh, you, you might, might not be able. This is. I, I think you'll know this answer because you, you've been in so many metro roles um, so fabulously. But so if we have another, if an amendment comes up or another short-term rental piece of legislation comes up that we're needed, that we that the council feels needs to go through, will it go through the planning commission still, or will it just be going to council the way an ordinance about uh, your average easement abandonment would? Right, so it would not go to the, the planning commission because the planning commission makes recommendations on zoning laws. Um, and this, no, well, there are kind of two parts. Um, let me kind of bifurcate my answer. Planning Commission hears zoning cases uh, or zoning, um, they the rezonings or you know zoning bills. So they make a recommendation on that. This would not necessarily go to the Planning Commission. It would still have a public hearing before council because that has been it's been amended to require that. Um, the one caveat being in Title Seventeen, we still have short terminals in the land use table. So, for example, owner occupieds are allowed in certain districts, non owner occupieds are allowed in certain districts. If that change were to be made, that change by virtue of being in the land use table, which is in Title 17, would go to the Planning Commission. 
So just just with respect, if we were going to say, for example, you know, recently there was a bill that said, you know, RM20, you can't have non-owner occupied anymore. That is in the land use table. So that if that were to change again, or any district where you can um, can or cannot have a particular type of short term rental, that would still go to the planning commission. Also, Lisa Milligan is here from the planning commission, so she might might want to chime in as well because she is certainly a planning expert more than I am. But with respect to just you know, the for example, one of the regulations is to get an owner occupied permit, you have to have two different types of um, proof that you actually re permanently reside there. If if the council were going to change that to require, say, four types of proof, that's not going to go before the planning commission because that's not part of the zoning. That's not the zoning context. Only if it changes the actual land use of where you can do short term rentals. And again, Lisa Milligan's here, so if she want, has anything to add, she may want to jump in. You're still muted. Council Lady Murphy, you're still muted. Oh, this mute button, it's better or worse, right? I see some of you laughing. Um, Lisa, if you, and then we'll go to Council Lady Allen. Lisa, if you do have any comments, because I don't think I realized when this was coming through Planning Commission, um, I don't think it, I realized that it was, that so much would not be going through the Planning Commission anymore. And I want to make sure that before we move forward on this, that the, that as a committee, as a council body, we are okay with with this kind of dual role um, and not necessarily the traditional path of legislation that we've been used to. Council, uh, council Lady Million, <laughs> Lisa, if you would, if you could speak to that at all, and then we'll get moving on Council Lady Allen's amendment. Sure. Um, this is Lisa Milligan with the planning department. Um, like Emily said, uh, the way that short-term rentals are regulated, um, there are a couple of different aspects to it. Um, the first thing has to do with the land use regulation, where they are or aren't permitted, and that is strictly a zoning code matter. And so those items would still be going to the planning commission if there were to be any changes to where a short-term rental is or is not permitted. Now, something that has always been a little bit unusual for short-term, uh, related specifically to short-term rentals is the inclusion of some operational standards in the zoning code in regards to how businesses are regulated. And so shifting those to Title VI, where they will now be housed with other business type regulations, sort of brings it more in line in regards to how other businesses are regulated. Um, and so removing it from the zoning code even though the planning commission would not hear it, that's not unusual because there are many types of business regulatory functions that the planning commission does not hear now. So the planning commission would still be focused on land use applications and where they are or permitted, but the other would be moved to Title VI where the council will still be making recommendations on those and ultimately approving, but they would be removed from planning. Okay, thank you, Ms. Milligan. Um, Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, to circle back around to a point that uh, Councilmember Bradford asked about earlier, I have an um, amendment that I would love for someone on the committee to offer. Um, uh, that would I'll do. I'll go ahead and move your. I forget that you're not on this committee uh, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move your. I'll move your amendment. And Council Lady Styles, if you'll second. Yes, I second the motion. Thank you. I appreciate that for both of you. Um, and this would simply, um, as it is currently written, it would it would specify that, that at least two members um, are representatives of neighborhood organizations and at least two represent the short-term rental perspective. Uh, it, it, as Council Member Bradford was alluding to, just to make sure that we have some balance on the committee. Um, I understand there's a little bit of concern um, that that would uh, have the potential to create uh, two sets of, of people who simply cancel each other out and then you're only left with three people actually voting. Um, so I would be uh, willing to reduce that to uh, at least one representative from each of those constituencies, but just to make sure that the mayor, um, as, we, as we said, is aware that we feel like that type of balance is important. So I would offer that as a friendly amendment and I'm willing to make that change and I understand that I can do that on the floor um, during the council meeting. All right, well, we have the motion properly, uh, your amendment properly in front of us, motioned and second. Is there any um, questions for Council Lady Allen on her amendment or Councilman uh, Pulley on her amendment or any comments on the amendment? 
Oh, I'm sorry. I missed a bunch of y'all down at the bottom of the page with questions. Councilman Bradford, I heard you, I saw you talking as well. So go for it. Councilman Bradford. Okay. Um, Councilman Pulley. Yes, uh, I appreciate uh, Council Lady Allen and her work. Um, as I stated earlier, uh, I think it's important for us to uh, certainly signal to the mayor who does appoint the board uh, that we do have an interest in representation from uh, uh, these parties. Uh, you know, and I appreciate Council Lady Allen being willing to entertain moving this from two to one. I think that would, if, if it's the will of the council to have this uh, uh, amendment, I, my preference would be uh, one member from each side as opposed to two. Uh, uh, but uh, maybe uh, Emily can comment on this from a legal perspective. Uh, I think it, that once we start mandating this by uh, ordinance, then you set, we set ourselves up for some legal challenges as it relates to who qualifies as a neighborhood person, who qualifies as a short-term rental person. Uh, I will say that I, I did speak with the attorney uh, who is the short-term rental lobby on uh, this issue, and she seemed to be fine with us just sort of speaking from the floor and uh, uh, making sure that uh, uh, we we speak from the floor and let uh, let it be known that uh, uh, the council has a desire to have representation from both sides on the board. So I'd rather uh, Emily comment on that from a legal perspective, than, unless I'm way off base here. Um, uh, Council Lady Allen is is your amendment that we just have someone from those communities, or do we make them? Do you name, or I guess this is to both sponsors, are y'all willing to name groups to be nominating um, to the mayor and then the mayor pick from those slates? That's something that's done a lot at the state with state boards is that they'll name certain organizations to nominate and the, the mayor would then pick from those nominations. Is that something either of y'all would be interested in? Um, I would like to hear what... Uh, um, what what the legal you know comment on that is and then i would i would just express some hesitation that you know so, you know if we decide nastra is the group then that leaves out a group of people who are not members of nastra you know or if we pick one neighborhood group over another i feel like that opens up a, a different can of worms that uh that to me may, may be more problematic but i would i would uh, be interested in hearing what emily lamb has to say miss lamb you have the floor sure so i don't really have councilman Pulley said it um, I think very well. I don't think that it is, um, you know, illegal to say how a board has to be made up. Um, as he said earlier, none of the other boards and commissions in the city have specific requirements in terms of, well, I mean, you know, they might say it requires a lawyer or it requires an architect, but it doesn't necessarily um, require that they be associated with any particular, you know, one side or the other. I don't think the... Um, I do think they actually is do. I'm sorry okay. to interrupt. There are boards, like for example, there's a there's a board. Civil service has a union member. I believe it's one of the electrical boards has an IBEW member requirement. There's some others like that. Okay, but but I meant in more, more in terms of neighborhood advocate. Certainly, I stand corrected um, with that specific. But I meant more just in general in terms of neighborhood advocate versus industry advocate. Um, I I don't think that's the reason. Just to echo what Councilman Pulley said, I think you you per perhaps open yourself up to legal challenges in terms of how is that defined? Are there certain parameters? Do they have to meet certain criteria? For example, if I'm a neighborhood advocate, you know, but my sister owns a short-term rental, are there going to be challenges that, in fact, I'm actually a short-term rental advocate because we may own the property together, or just they're they're just it's um. You know, lots of different scenarios that could arguably, you know, the arguments could be made that they don't meet that criteria. Um, so I don't know. It's not that it's not enforceable. It's not that it's illegal. It just it may be harder to to define um, and to actually achieve that goal versus, as Councilman Pulley said, if the council wanted to encourage the mayor from the floor 
you know, to get the different perspectives. So, you know, and, and certainly if it's, if that's the will of the council and that's how the council wants to vote, then, you know, I don't know that it would necessarily be a problem. I just think it could potentially be more problematic. It's more likely to be problematic than not. Does that make sense? Sure. Um, council, council lady Allen, do you have more comments on your amendment? Do you want us to move this forward or do you want to do a verbal amendment from the floor? Um, thanks for the opportunity to, to respond. Uh, uh, one, one quick clarification, uh, again, from Ms. Lamb. When you say it's more likely to be problematic than not, do you mean it's more likely to be problematic if we have it than if we don't, or that you mean it's, it probably would be problematic? I'm sorry. I mean that if you, <laughs> if you do have this requirement in the actual law, then that, open, that potentially opens the door to arguments that we're not following the law if certain somebody says, well, no, that person's not actually a neighborhood advocate. That certain right. person's not actually an industry advocate. So it could potentially open the door to legal challenges if it is included. I don't know that it necessarily will, but it could, whereas okay. if it's not in there by law and the council encourages the mayor to get those pers multiple perspectives on the board. And I, I think everybody agrees multiple perspectives are probably a good idea, um, but it, it may be less it's less open to challenge i think if the mayor um if the council encourages the mayor to get those perspectives on the board than if it's an actual legal requirement that is codified in the legislation or in the uh, code gotcha thank you for that clarification and the other thing i would add then is um if 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 we speak it from the floor now then it will be heard by the current mayor um and then and then um we have a new change of council, a new change of administration, and that preference is no longer anywhere. Um, if it becomes part of this law, then it carries on in perpetuity or until we decide that it was a problem. Um, That's so right. I, I would, I'm sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, I would say that the, if um, the way the board it made is made up, the boards roll off in staggered years. So mm -hmm. I think that when um, the, you know, when certain person rolls off, the council could at that point encourage the mayor. We would like, you know, we would ask, you know, encourage whoever the sitting mayor is to appoint somebody with, you know, representative of the person who rolled off. But as, you, but certainly there is, as you said, there's, that's not a guarantee in the way to guarantee it would be to to write it into the legislation. Thank you. And Council Lady Allen, you know, this this council is very prone and likes to. Uh, write resolutions and i'm sure that's a resolution that we uh we could have next meeting on on, <laughs> on about all of our boards and commissions having diversity and balance i think that's something that that's we should probably, i'd be happy to work with you on as you well do. yes so um okay so to clarify do you want us to and then i'm coming to you councilman o'connell do you want us to move this amendment or do you want to make a verbal amendment on the floor um i would i would love to hear this group's opinion on the amendment and and i would say that i you know if i make it on the floor i will change it to one as opposed to the two that is written in there and, and uh, mr cooper said i can do that so okay. i would i would love to hear the further discussion what this group thinks and then i'll act accordingly okay great councilman o'connell you have the floor thank you madam chair um i i appreciate uh council member Allen looking for a formal sense of balance here but i think also um, I have seen an incredible imbalance in the way that uh, uh, very moneyed permit holders have uh, kind of attacked policy here at the expense of neighborhoods. And I think we're going to know very clearly from the public if the board itself becomes problematic in some way. And I, I, I'm not personally comfortable supporting this amendment uh, with either two or one. I think uh, I think the bill is better off without the amendment. So I'm not going to support it. And I would encourage others to uh, let Councilmember Allen find a, a potentially resolution approach or some other some other mechanism. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councilman O'Connell. Um, Council Lady Stiles, on the amendment? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I actually support Councilmember Allen's amendment. I think it's a good idea for us to begin to look at boards with a diversity lens. I think a lot of the problems that we've run into lately is saying we have boards and commissions that are not diverse enough, and now we're trying to play catch up. So this 
allows us to address this on the front end. I think it's wise. Thank you. Thank you Council Lady Styles. Um, before I come back to you, uh, Councilman O'Connell, Council Lady Allen, what if it's, instead of having somebody representing, what if it uh, said one person, at least one person has to have a short-term rental and at least one person cannot have a short-term rental? Would, would that reach your same goal here? Or I'm just throwing out some options. Um, I would I would love to hear from Ms. Lamb if that if that uh, gets rid of the problems that we're concerned about. If, I mean, if so, I think that's a, a helpful suggestion. Um, I think um, that it's certain. I'm sorry. Were you guys? Was somebody else about to say? Something? No, no, no. Go ahead, Ms. Lamb. I do think that that uh, gets closer to the target. Um, you know, the issue then is. And again, I'm sorry. This is me thinking like a lawyer. <laughs> that's what I do. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I do. You. Yeah. <laughs> Then the issue but could potentially become, well, I had a short-term rental, but I decided you know, to move or I decided to let my permit expire and stop operating. And then you know, I had one when I was appointed or you know, I, I didn't have one and then I bought a second home and I, you know, in a whatever zoning district that allowed it. So I do think that would achieve the goal, certainly on the front end of the different perspectives, because obviously if you have one, you're pro. Um, now, I would say that not necessarily everybody who doesn't have them it would be considered a neighborhood advocate or would be considered in opposition to short-term rentals. They may just not have a short-term rental. So I do think that gets closer to it with, but, but again, you know, that, that doesn't necessarily, it, it kind of just creates d a different set of questions that would, could, could potentially come up. Councilman O'Connell on the amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think in response to Councilmember Stiles, the one thing I would say here is that diversity itself is not uh, you know, a diverse set of perspectives. It can sometimes be a useful uh, mechanic, but I think I think about the issue of equity lenses and their application to policy, I'm thinking about typically vulnerable populations. And frankly, vulnerable populations have been the ones uh, Playing the greatest amount of uh, disempowerment on the issue of short-term rental. And sometimes those are working class folks in neighborhoods who cannot uh, leverage their assets to show up to the meetings to do this stuff in the middle of the day. And I think, um, again, I think we have heard clearly as members of this council for a full term and more about some of the problems that have arisen here. And I think this board is a good idea. I do not think the amendment is a good idea. Thank you, Mr. O'Connell. Oh, Council Lady Van Reese, I'm sorry, you're at the bottom of the list. Go for it. Oh, thank you. I should be on the top of the list. Um, uh, I, I just wanted to remind everybody how people end up on boards and commissions uh, because it, it is up to us to find individuals, uh, present them to the mayor's office for consideration. Uh, we can we can help with that, give them some great ideas, and then whenever uh, those uh, uh, offerings are brought to us for confirmation, uh, we can decide to affirm or disallow anyone onto one of those boards based on how we know the makeup is. And so um, I'm, I'm with Freddie on this, uh, Mr. O'Connell on this, because I think, I think the, um, the intent on diversity of ideas on the boards is bigger than just this one board. Um, you know, the, the LGBTQ caucus did a lot of work with um, trying to make sure that there's a self-identification uh, box on the form when you fill it out, because we want to know whether or not, you know, 8 10% of every board and commission has um, someone with that community on it. Uh, we need them diverse in uh, race, uh, religion, gender, uh, gender identity. We, we need all that diversity. And the best way we can help the mayor's office achieve that ultimate goal is to present individuals that we think should be on that committee or that board. Um, and I, I don't, I don't want to give up any of that power that we already have on the council. And for that, um, I, I won't support this amendment, but I do support the idea of getting more uh, progressive action in regard to it. I just think it's, it's something that shouldn't necessarily be singled out on this particular piece of legislation. All righty. Um, let's see here. 
Okay, so seeing no more discussion or questions or hands raised on the amendment, we can, um, we can move on the amendment. It is motioned and secondly and properly in front of us. And so on this one, um, we, I know I'm going to have yes votes and I'm going to have no votes. So what we're going to do is, let's see here. Ray, I guess raise your hand in Webex now if you are for the Allen Amendment. If you support the Allen Amendment, please raise your hand via Webex now. And I will call them out um, through the list and, and go from there. So we have Hall, Styles, Tunes, Scroll Murphy. Okay, so that is four in favor. Now, please uh, put your hands down and raise your hands if you are against the amendment. Okay, so against the amendment, we have Parker, Bradford. Van Reese, Hager, Gamble, Welch, O'Connell. That takes us to seven again. I did get Parker. You were my first one. Okay, so seven in favor, I'm, I'm sorry, seven in, oh, four, four, seven against. Um, so that will be the recommendation on the amendment. So your amendment does not go into the bill at this time. So now we are back on the substitute BL 202187 as amended. Um, any further discussion? I would like to comment that I think it is interesting. Um, so much of the discussion around short-term rentals has been about moving commercials and hotel uh, commercial businesses and hotels into our neighborhoods, and it it's almost as though, as the sponsor and as Miss Lamb explained the bill, moving these more business regulations of this into the business regulation part of the code, I think is almost an acknowledgement that these short-term rentals are commercial businesses that we're allowing in our neighborhoods. Um, and so I, I hadn't really thought through that part of it until tonight either, that that really kind of sticks out to me from this discussion and kind of changes, at least for me, the way that we are, I think it changes the way that we can handle and, uh, and talk about short-term rentals when we're discussing whether it's a commercial business in a neighborhood or not. Um, Council Lady Welch on the bill. Um, I'm sorry. I just had a phone call. I got distracted for a moment. I'm sorry. I know. It's easy to get lost in my thoughts. Um, your hand was raised, Council Lady. Oh, no. I'm sorry. That was from my vote. Sorry. Fine. Um, Councilman Hager, do you have comments or are you a leftover? I meant to cut off. I'm sorry. Oh, no. You're fine. Any comments, um, discussion, or questions on the bill? Okay, with that, we are going to take a vote. And so what we will do is if you are against substitute BL 202187, please raise your hand in WebEx if you are against the bill, the substitute bill as amended. It does not include the Allen Amendment at this time. Okay, seeing none, double checking, hearing none. Councilman, your bill is approved. Okay, so that takes us, sure. That takes us to page five, item number 16. Councilman Hall, are you still with us? There you are. Uh, yeah. BL 2020-292 by Councilman Hall changes 3.74 acres from RS-15 to RM-9 zoning for property located at Ashland City Highway unnumbered at the northeast corner of Ashland City Highway and Cato Road. Councilman, would you like to make a motion? 
Move for approval. All right, looking for hands for a second. Oh, Council Lady Gamble, sorry, missed you. Um, thank you, Chair. I just had a question for the sponsor. Is there a particular uh, project? Before you get there, are you seconding the motion? Can you hear me? I can. Are you seconding the motion? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were on discussion. Are we uh, uh, moving for the motion? We are looking okay. for yes. on the motion. I'll second. Yeah, All right. I'll second. Then, so uh, go to ahead with your questions. Discussion. <laughs> yes, uh, I wanted to find out from the sponsor, is there a particular uh, project associated with this um, zone change uh, uh, that you can elaborate on for us? So this project on Cato Road, uh, the National City Highway, there is a particular project. Um, we spent over a year um, refining, tweaking, and changing this had over a dozen community meetings, worked closely with planning department and the developers to come to um, uh, this final draft or version of this, this particular bill. Um, everything that the community asked for um, has been provided by the developer, even up to the point that they, they are also being very generous community uh, participants and, and helping out the school next door of where they're moving to. This project is a smaller version of the three existing neighborhoods and the townhomes that are directly across the street list uh, eighth of a mile um, on Ashton City Highway. So um, I think we're in a very good place. This is actually a very beautiful project. It's similar to something that you have, Council Member Gavin, uh, in your district along Weiss Creek Pike. Uh, which, which project is that? Smaller version of what do you what is that um, that Old South did last year? Um, oh, you talking about Green Lane? Yes. So these, but those are single family homes. This is you RM. You're home. trying to rezone the RM nine. These are single family homes. It's ten town homes, single family for sale, and then there are twenty four um, single family homes, two car garage, all three. So twenty four on three acres. Yes. That's quite a bit. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, Council Lady Styles. Thank you, Madam Chair. Councilman Hall, have there been any other community meetings since our, our last meeting? Since the public hearing? We've not had a community meeting, but the developer met with a group of the individuals on the site from um, the petition. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I broke up a bit on my end. The, the developers met themselves with several of the individuals who um, were still opposed to or under the impression that these were not single family homes on the site and um, clarified that these were single family homes, no rentals for sale. Okay, so they met individually, but there wasn't a community meeting? No. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilman Hall, you mentioned that there are no rentals. Is that something that is written into the bill? No, it's not written into the bill uh, that the townhomes are, are not to be rentals. They are for sale properties. Um, this is identical to, again, what's across the street. Um, we've got two approved projects, one almost complete, one about to start, um, 101 units and then 74 units. Um, and this is just the, the, well, actually it's a different development, but identical to that project. Okay, I think I'm just, the, the reason I ask that is I'm concerned because we so often hear from communities that they're told that something won't be a, a rental project, and then, and then because we don't have it in the bill, that that changes. We'll go to Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would ask the sponsor if he has considered or would consider. Uh, 
uh, the RM9-NS zoning rather than just a, a base RM9 uh, to, again, keep these as residential project? Um, we went with the recommendation from planning. Um, this took on a couple of different versions and it was changed over this year period. Um, the number of units had reduced um, on more than one occasion. And this is what the community and uh, planning both and the developer all could agree on. Uh, uh, Lisa Milligan, could you confirm whether uh, the note, the NS was something that was proposed at planning? I don't recall that. Um, hi, this is Lisa with planning. Um, I don't believe that we discussed the NS um, districts at planning. I do believe that when this application was filed, um, that that was not a district that actually existed. It had not been created at that time. Um, typically, if something, if we would find that something is consistent with RM, not, if if. Typically, if planning finds that a policy that a zoning is consistent with policy, such as RM9, we would also find that an RM9 NS would also be consistent with the policy. Um, and so, but it was not something that we discussed. Thank you, Madam Chair, for that inquiry. I, I guess I would ask the sponsor if he would consider an NS designation here. Thank you. Well, uh, if Ms. Milligan could clarify again. Um, NS did not exist at the time this originally. That's how long it's been going on. But as she stated, um, it would be the same thing. It would still be meet with policy and, and meet with staff approval. So could she explain the difference in or the need for an NS? Hi, sure. This is Lisa. Um, uh, changing the any sort of substitute or an amendment that would change it from RM9 to RM9 NS would still be consistent with the Planning Commission recommendation, and so it would not. There would not be any need for it to be referred back to the Planning Commission. Um, it would be consistent with the, the recommendation of Planning Commission. So, Councilman Hall, I think the question to you would be, would you take that friendly amendment to turn this into a uh, no short-term rental zoning? Yes. Okay. Uh, Hannah, would this, can we do that on the floor tonight? Or is that something where this needs to be deferred to uh, make that amendment? It would be a late amendment. So the rules would need to be suspended. Okay. Actually, a substitute. Councilman O'Connell, would you like to make that um, an amendment or substitute motion? I, I think I'd leave that up to the sponsor. I don't want to. Uh, uh, well, I'm not interested in making an unfriendly amendment. If he if he would accept it as a friendly amendment, I would ha be happy to do that. But I don't want to make it an unfriendly. Amendment. No, Councilman I mean. As a community, that's not something that we've ever been interested in. We would, I, I can't see there being any reason why anyone would, would object to um, the no short term rental. So if you would like to make that, that substitute, we can do that. I'm happy to do that and we can just do that on the floor, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, all right, so we will handle that on the floor. Um, instead of making that amendment now and Council Lady Hurt. Um, thank you. I'm not sure which uh, bill that we are on for um, Council Member Hall. And Council Member Hall, know that I am, you know, we are together on many, many things. But I have been inundated with telephone calls. Uh, from people in Jolton. I'm not sure we on Jolton or we on Cato Road, but it's been the same concerns that they have inundated me with telephone calls about being able to meet with you. So I'm not sure which one. Can you tell me which? We're on Cato Road. Okay. Uh, I think that people are okay with the development itself, 
but they have just wanted to have a meeting so they can just be clear, see some renderings or something a um, little bit more um, um, tangible for them. And, you know, because of my assignment, in that district, I'm sure they have been reaching out to me because I know many of them. I have responded to your emails with some other concerns that I have, and I was really prepared to, to stand with you, but I really do think that we need another meeting. Um, and I know that you've worked on this, and I know it's been going on, but I do, I do not want the bill I mean the, the resolution to to um, to to be challenged and have problems with it because I do believe it's a good development and if they want to have the amenities in their community, they're going to have to have more rooftops and a development like this can help and support it. But they don't feel like they've had that it's actually been vetted through the community. There have been some real harsh things said and in and, 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 and all earnest, I could not move forward without expressing those things. Many of them uh, I know personally, uh, many of them, of course, you know, I was able to meet with them when I was over the district, and I do think they have some viable concerns, and I would just ask you, um, if it's possible, that it be deferred until, um, until for, for one more meeting. I had been told that it was going to be deferred, so I didn't press it as hard uh, with you as I obviously seems like it needs to be. Um, but I've heard similar things from both the Cato and Bordeaux community as I have had from the Jolton area. So I, I'm just asking you if you would, and, and I don't know if it's appropriate for me to ask for a one meeting deferral or not. Is it? Council Lady, you are welcome to ask the sponsor to do whatever you want. Not being on the committee, you can't make the motion, but you're welcome to ask him of that. And so, Councilman Hall, would uh, you have been asked a question by Council Lady Hurt, and you have the floor. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. With all due respect, um, Council Member Hurt, um, we don't reset every time. Um, there is some confusion or questions. We took over a year, went through three different versions, had over a dozen meetings. The developer met with several of these folks individually. Um, we have generally gone above and beyond. And this was actually on the heels of and during the process of last term when I even wow. expanded the notification distance to include more people um, through planning and zoning. And so that was one of the precipice for situations like this. We have had, again, well over the required number of meetings, um, gone above and beyond mm -hmm. and in this process. And while I know there's always gonna be someone that comes late to the conversation, we can catch them up. There has not been a meeting where in this, in this last, or in this term that took place on this, where there were not renderings and site plans shown we present it to each HOA, to Gertner Management Company, who manages the three adjoining subdivisions. Um, there was overwhelming community support at the last meeting. Um, with over 100 people in attendance at Pastor Sonny Dixon's church um, on Clarksville Highway, and the communities are almost 100% behind this. Again, I'm, I'm sure you've gotten some calls and emails. I have too, and it's been to clarify the same things over and over again. Um, but at, at this point, we've gone, again, far, far above and beyond and, and taken well over a year now to, to get to this point. And so um, we're never going to satisfy everyone at the same time. But when you have 80 to 90 percent of community support, a petition with well over a thousand supporters um, throughout the community, then it's time to move forward. Uh, thank you. Um Councilmember Hall, and I really didn't want to get back and forth on this like that, 
but I just have to stand and say that some of those names of people that have been on that list of supporters that you have, I recognize some of those names because they're sorority sisters of mine and they don't live in that district. They live all over, um, and I know particularly uh, several of them live in Antioch. And I don't believe that there is a 90% of residents who are in support of the project. I specifically just requested, if you would, have a meeting, have me in the meeting, and I would be willing to, to do it because I wanted to support you. But I don't think that everything here has been presented in the most upstanding way in order for the community to feel um, supportive of it. And, and I just think that numbers are being thrown out there and, and, and I, I um, don't want to get into any type of um, public debate about it, but, you know, as an at-large member, I am uh, their representative as well. And because of that, I do have to stand what I believe is right. And, and, and it was just simple a meeting that we could have had over the past three weeks that was not held. And, um, and, and I'm not exactly sure why not. Um, it, it seems as though it's being said that things can be done, and then on the other hand, it's not done, and we're getting to this point. And I just think that that, that brings concern, not only for those residents, but it brings concern for me. And, and without you being willing to move forward with this, um, that exacerbates the concern that I have. And, and, and I'm just going to have to ask uh, council members not to uh, support this because I've reached out to um, people who were a part of it and um, Tiffany K part and she basically said that the, the, the nuts and bolts that you're speaking of she was really not a part of that she provided consultation to the developers so That's with correct. that with that, I do still think, however, that in this time, we must allow our constituents to be heard. And you have constituents who are well aware of development and what should be done, and they would be all for good development. Um, but I think it's not so much as development as it is the non-responsiveness of the council member. Thank you, Council Lady Hurt. Council Lady Gamble, your hands up. Yes, thank you, Chair. I would just like to to reiterate what Councilwoman uh, Hurt has has stated. I too, uh, being in the adjacent district, have received quite a few phone calls and emails about the lack of transparency and the lack of communication about the project. They're not necessarily saying it's not a good project. They just don't have any information. And, and when there have been several calls for a meeting, those calls have gone unresponsive. Uh, they haven't received a response and there hasn't been uh, another meeting since our last council meeting where we discussed the deferral for another meeting. That meeting wasn't held. So, uh, so I too can in good faith uh, support the, the project at this time without another meeting. And I would ask that uh, the sponsor consider a deferral for another meeting to have a community meeting uh, about this. I too would be willing to, to attend and, 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 and providing the assistance as well uh, as Councilwoman Hurt. Uh, but it, I would just urge you to, to um, consider a motion uh, for a deferral so that the community can get the response uh, about the project that need, that's needed and, and, and we can move forward. Thank you, Council. I will say as, as planning chair, many people have reached out to me as well. Um, and I've heard similar things to what Council Lady Hurt and Council Lady Gamble has said. Council Lady Gamble, was that a motion you would like to make or was that asking the sponsor to, uh, to see if he would be willing to make that motion prior to the committee making a motion? I would I would ask if the sponsor would make the oh, I motion. See, I see you talking. Oh, okay. Can, I'm sorry. Can okay. you hear me? Okay. 
Yes, I, I you, had, had asked. <laughs> okay, I had asked about the sponsor making the motion, uh, okay. but I would be willing to make the motion. Councilman Hall, would you like to um, proceed forward, or are you willing to make a motion to defer? Uh, again, we, we've had well over a dozen meetings taken over a year. We've provided everything that the community has asked for, and they have been provided with everything in the development that they, they were concerned with. Um, at this point, again, we need to move forward with this. Um, more than a dozen meetings over a year period, multiple deferrals at planning and at council means there has been more than enough ample opportunity there have been mailers, there have been phone conversations, there have been individual meetings with the developers. Um, at the end of the day, this isn't normal, it isn't common, it's not what's asked of anyone. Um, and one thing that no one can ever debate or look at District 1 is that we don't have enough meetings or aren't inclusive of enough. If anything, we have more than people wish we had, but we make a point to exhaust all things. I have deferred and pulled bills on third reading before to make sure that everything was included that people um, had been asking for. This is not one of those cases. We have moved okay. heaven and earth to make sure this is in place, and so we need to move forward. Respectfully, Councilman Hall, that is not what we heard at the public hearing and the emails and the calls we have received. So, Council Lady Gamble, would you like to make a motion at this time? Yes, and, and that would be to save this, this bill uh, because no one is saying it's a bad bill, but if you are insisting and in moving it forward today, I, 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 I'm afraid it won't. Uh, won't be successful. So uh, with that regard, I'll well, make a motion. With all, with all due respect, on second reading and public hearing, after those conversations, we had 29, I believe. Mr. Hall, Council Lady Gamble has the floor. Thank you. Yes, I'll make a motion to defer one meeting. Thank you. I will second that motion to defer one meeting. What we will do is if you would like to vote against the motion to defer one meeting, please raise your hand in the WebEx. Okay. I'm I sorry, Chair. Did you say if we if you support the motion, raise your hand or if you no, make if a motion? Like to vote against. Oh, okay. The motion. Okay. Usually Thank you. find it easier to say if you'd like to vote against the motion to defer one meeting, please raise your hand. I see Councilman O'Connell and Councilman Hall. So the motion approved by this committee is to defer one meeting. And let me just run through the calendar real quick, make sure that I have written something down on everything. And that concludes our meeting. Thank you so much. Um, see y'all, see y'all at the next, um, I guess rules comes in here next. Thank you.